Hi guys, so in this video I wanted to sort of do like an overview of all of the John Carpenter movies that he's directed that I have in my collection and sort of give like a bit of a basic guide as to the films I really enjoy uh, of the movies that he's made and sort of let you know as well, you know, if you're not really familiar with John Carpenter's work, do I recommend these movies, do I not? Sort of give like a little bit of an overview of the movies that he's directed, um, all the one of all the ones in my collection anyway. Now, I don't think I own all the movies he's directed. I think I'm probably missing one or two. I don't have any of the short movies he's directed either. Um, but yeah, if I'm missing anything, let me know in the comments. But yeah, I am pretty much going to run through just all of the the movies that I have directed by him. So the first one we've got is Dark Star. Um, I've just got this on DVD. Um, nothing too special about this film. It feels more like a sort of like a, a student movie, you know, sort of director testing the waters for their first film. It's a fun little sci-fi movie for what it is. Um, I know a lot of people don't really like this one. I think some people would go as far to say it's unwatchable. Uh, that wasn't the case for me. I did get something out of it and I did enjoy it. Don't think it's his best, not by far, but I don't think it's his worst either. But yeah, I had fun with it for what it was. Uh, it's not amazing, but I think it's definitely worth checking out. Um, it doesn't really represent Carpenter's work, in my opinion. I wouldn't. It doesn't spring out to me as one of his best. Um, but it's still worth checking out. It's it's a fun film. I enjoyed it and had a good time with it. But I don't think it's amazing by any stretch of the imagination. So yeah, that is Dark Star. Um, next one um, that I've got is Assault on Precinct 13. Um, this is sort of really Carpenter coming into his own, I think. And really, really showing us what he had to offer. I love the sort of... The, the, the minimal setting of this film it's really really great the action's great um, one scene in particular which was like really shocking involving the ice cream truck if you've seen the film you'll know what I'm on about but it's absolutely fantastic and really really dig Assault on Precinct 13 absolutely love it um, fully fully recommend getting getting your hands on this one if you can I thought it was absolutely fantastic so yeah Assault on Precinct 13 uh, next one I've got up is probably one of the best horror films ever made, um, and that is uh, Halloween. So for me, um, this movie pretty much captures the essence of the season and the holiday Halloween. It really, really does, in my opinion. I think this movie is a masterclass in camera work and sound design. I think it is absolutely fantastic. Uh, John Carpenter's score that he composed himself, absolutely brilliant in this film. I know some people can say it can be a bit overplayed. Never ever really entered my mind that or ever really sort of bothered me, but that's just me. Um, absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'm going to refer to my, I often refer to Michael Myers as well as The Shape because that's what he's called in the credits as well. Um, but yeah, it's it's such a creepy, well acted the first Jamie Lee Curtis uh, film as well. Uh, Donald Pleasance as, as well in there as Loomis. Wonderful cast, wonderfully acted. Um, Creates such a great, great ambiance. What a great opening sequence as well. Um, I think this is fantastic, and it's one of the best horror films with one of the best endings ever as well. Um, I absolutely love Halloween. I can't praise it enough, and it's one I watch. Every October without fail. Absolutely love it. Uh, so coming up next is, I believe, a TV movie that he's directed. Uh, I think it was his first collaboration as well with uh, Kurt Russell. Uh, and that is the uh, Elvis movie. Um, yeah, a bit of a different turn, really, because I enjoyed uh, Assault on Precinct 13 and Halloween so much. This was sort of a, a different direction, uh, I think, for him, which was just really... Really uh, refreshing, and I enjoyed this movie. I thought it was really good. A um, bit over long for me, but I enjoyed it. I think it's what, probably one of the most underrated music biopics we've got. I thought Kurt Russell's Elvis was fantastic. It sort of delved into the army days of Elvis, you know, before he sort of really became the rock and roll megastar. But I had an absolutely really, really good time with it. Um, 
you know, John Carpenter and Kurt Russell for me just absolutely go hand in hand. Um, and it was really good to sort of see them do something a bit different from what I'm used to them doing, you know, like uh, the, the thing and Big Trouble. Escape from New York. This was just sort of like a breath, breath of fresh air, and it really didn't really fit into that category for me. But I still had a good time with it, and thought Elvis was really, really good. So check Elvis out if you've not seen it. Next up, um, sort of going back to the horror genre, we've got uh, The Fog. Um, yeah, I enjoyed this movie. It's got some really, really good creepy scenes. We've got we're getting a few more of the. Carpenter staples with his actors, you know, like Tom Tom Atkins and um, Adrian Barbo, Jamie Lee Curtis. Really, really enjoy this film. Great creepy ending as well. Really good atmosphere in it as well. Um, one of my favourite creepy scenes in this is um, it's at the, uh, the the hospital with the the body that's under the sheet. I mean, my word, that really, really unsettled me. Really um, creepy stuff, but yeah. Um, I've heard the remake of this is absolutely dire. I've got no um, no intention of checking that film out. Um, I just obviously stick to Carpenters. But yeah, it's a, a fantastic, really good, creepy little gem, The Fog. And I think it's wonderful. Um, so yeah, check The Fog out. Next up, we've got personally one of my favourite Carpenter films. I didn't enjoy this film the first time I saw it. Uh, and that is uh, Escape from New York. Um, it took me a couple of watches to get into this film, but um, really, really awesome premise to it. You know, this whole, the entire island of uh, Manhattan, New York, has pretty much become this uh, this pr- prison. Prison. And Donald Pleasance play, plays the president, and he ends up getting stranded. And Snake Plissken played by Kate Russell, has to go in and get him. And it's brilliant. You've, you've got Tom Atkins in there as well, Lee Van Cleef. Great, great cast. Um, Adrian Barbo as well. Isaac Hayes as well. Harry Dean Stanton. Absolute um, legends of cinema for me, particularly the cinema I enjoy. But for such a, a small, grounded movie as well, you can tell, I don't think the budget on this was absolutely massive, but... It does a lot with a little, and I love it when movies do that. It really, really does create this really dirty, grim, dangerous environment, and I absolutely love it. Um, It's so good. It's one of Kate Russell's best, one of Kate Russell's most underrated movies, in my opinion, Um, and I think it's absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, check out Escape from New York. It's really good, really tense, really well acted, and one of Carpenter's best, definitely. Right, so coming up next for me is, well, probably what a lot of people consider, you know, this is up there with Halloween for most people, and uh, I'm certainly no exception to this. And it is The Thing. I've got it in this sort of VHS box. This comes with the Blu-ray and the DVD. And, yeah, this is a this is a masterclass in practical effects. Um I'm going to admit that it's not a movie I enjoyed the first time I saw it. Didn't really like it at all. Um, but over with multiple watches, I think this movie is a masterpiece um, in every sense of the word. It knows its limits and it pushes the bar. It it knows its limits in terms of effects, but it it pushes them at the same. It pushes those limits that it knows. It's just, oh, it's absolutely fantastic. I, I, I just absolutely love it and think it's it's superb. Um, again, you know, Kurt Russell, John Carpenter, hand in hand in this one as well. Absolutely fantastic. Um, great, suspenseful, paranoia, sci-fi movie this, and I absolutely love it. So um, just give a look at what we get inside as well with this one. So it comes in like this sort of like VHS tape box with the cover. If you open it up, we get this this poster as well. Absolutely love that. I think that is fantastic. Of course, all the credits at the bottom. You also always get as well this sticker. You know, really, really nice touch. And we get a sort of card as well. So this is number six. My God, what the hell happened here? Really good artwork. 
If you want to read the card, just pause the video now. Really, really good. And there are your two discs as well. So, yeah, absolutely love the thing. Um, absolutely got panned as well on its original release. I remember Siskel and Ebert absolutely hating it. Slating it. I think they called it like the bath bag of the month, something like that. Just, yeah, it's, it's one of those movies that has um, aged well and has earned its, earned its fans along the way rather than initial release. But yeah, I think it's fantastic. So coming up next in the Carpenter collection I've got is, I believe, 1983's Christine, um, based on the book by Stephen King. I adore this film. I love it so much. It really, really won me over the first time I saw it, and it gets better with age, in my opinion. Now, I know it's critically not one of Carpenter's best well-received. I think this movie is sort of like... It's considered to be sort of like above average. I think it's great. I absolutely love it. Um, Keith Gordon, uh, what a, uh, a character arc that character goes through. Um, you know, sort of like this nerdy, wimpy kid to this absolutely taken over by his car, in love with it, would die for it. Uh, real villain of the movie um, but yeah Christine it's a gorgeous looking car with some absolutely horrible intense sequences I love it so much I just think it's absolutely brilliant so yeah check Christine out if you've not seen it I think it's wonderful uh, so next up uh, one of Carpenter's sort of less known films when it comes to myself I didn't really know much about this film I thought it was really sort of hard to get hold of uh, and that's Starman with Jeff Bridges and Karen Allen um, really really emotional ending to this film and it is well deserved I think it's fantastic so it sort of follows the premise of this woman whose husband whose husband passed away and this sort of alien entity comes to earth and it takes on the uh, the image and shape of her husband and it's basically like a a, um, a journey across the country that they have together. And I thought it was, it's so well acted and it's so well made. And as I said, one of Carpenter's lesser known films, in my opinion, anyway. You might have seen this, grown up on this and absolutely loved it or hated it or for whatever reason you might know of this film. But it was a lesser known one to me and I thought it was really, really enjoyable. So, yeah. Fully, fully recommend checking out Starman. Absolutely fantastic. So, next up, we've got another um, Kurt Russell and Carpenter collaboration, and that is Big Trouble in Little China. Um, this, for me, it just encapsulates all the batshit craziness of of Carpenter, and it's wonderful. It really, really is. It's it's such a delight. This movie. Um, you know, down to the visual effects, the the characters, Jack Burton, the setting, the turns the movie takes, um, the effects are oh, just it's wonderful. It's wonderful in every sense of the word. It's an I would describe this film as an absolute treat for the eyes and ears. It's it's so batshit insane and so wonderful. You know, um, it, it it really really is. I, I can't say much more than more than that and give this movie high praise for its creativity. Uh, I just really really dig Big Trouble in Little China. So yeah, fully fully recommend checking that one out. And uh, next up we've got uh, Prince of Darkness. Uh, this was an, a, another movie with uh, Donald Pleasance as well, and I was really surprised to see uh, Alice Cooper in there as well. Um, it's not quite a zombie film, but it's definitely got shades of that genre in it. It's so it, it really is um, quite creepy when it comes to that. But I really dug this movie for again for its creativity. It's not one I've what I watch very often, but from what I remember what from watching it, I had a good time with it and I really enjoyed it. it it's got Carpenter all over it, um, and I think it's a really, really good, good movie. Not one of his best, in my opinion, but I still enjoyed it and had a great time with it. So, yeah, that is Prince of Darkness. Uh, next up, we've got They Live, uh, Keith David and Roddy Piper. I mean, what a fun sort of double act in this movie. I just love the chemistry the two of them have together in this film. 
really, really good. Um, yeah, the premise to this, aliens have sort of secretly invaded Earth and they have subliminal messages pretty much posted everywhere and there are these sunglasses when you put them on you sort of see the real exposure um, the highlight of this film for me is the fight sequence um, where Roddy Piper is trying to get Keith David to wear these glasses and it just doesn't let up for one second it is so entertaining so much fun. I've heard a lot of people say they get bent out by it, but I, I get that. I understand that. Absolutely. Um, but I enjoy it. I have a good time with it. That's just my personal opinion. And I think it's a great little sci-fi movie and it's wonderful. It's so entertaining. Um, it really, really is. The one line is in this as well. So memorable and so quotable. Um, but yeah, that's They Live. Absolutely adore the film. Uh, I think it's fantastic. So... Yeah. Uh, next up, we've got Memoirs of an Invisible Man. Um, this is probably the most recent film I watched for the first time out of the whole Carpenter collection that I've got. And I must admit, I enjoyed it for what it was. Uh, I've heard a lot of people say, you know, it's not for them. It's not Carpenter's best. And I completely understand that's that side of it um, you know I love Ch Chevy Chase in this movie Daryl Hannah and Sam Neill as well I just thought I had a great time watching it it was just nice to watch a Carpenter film I hadn't seen before um, and and still get something out of it now I hadn't I hadn't heard the best of things about this film you know it's not one of his best and I was I was worried I was going to I was going to get another Ghost of Mars that really really wasn't the case so because I think my, I think my expectations were so low I did enjoy it and have a good time with it. Um, but yeah, it's it's not for everyone. I know a lot of Carpenter fans, this this isn't up there for them. It, it falls towards the bottom end of the list and that's understandable. I, I completely understand that. And But for me personally, I did have a good time with this film and it really did. Um, I got something out of it and it entertained me. So yeah, uh, Memoirs of an Invisible Man. It's not a must own but I definitely think it's uh, it's worth a watch at least once. <clears throat> so next up, we've got In the Mouth of Madness. Um, yeah, this was a real surprise to me. This one, I had a great time with it. Absolutely loved it. Sam Neill as well. Really, really good, uh, creepy, psyche type movie. Um, sort of has like a lot of inspiration as well from Stephen King in this you can sort of really see those elements to it it's quite creepy in parts as well it really really surprised me you know towards the end and the way the movie ends as well it really really uh, I didn't see that coming at all um, there's a great shot in this in, in, um, near towards the beginning where Sam Neill's sort of having this conversation in this sort of cafe and across the street see this guy coming over with a with an axe and it's just oh it's it, it was just it had me mesmerized i really really dug that scene and i enjoyed this movie a lot i think it's fantastic and it's uh it's one of the uh is better movies in my opinion so yeah that is in the mouth of madness really enjoyed it so unfortunately for me now i think that was really the last um good carpenter of that spell he had a really really good chunk with these movies um, in terms of quality um, but the next one we've got is Village of the Damned um, not a great movie um, in my opinion um, still some creepy elements but for me what stood out about this movie was I think it looks gorgeous I think it looks fantastic um, but yeah I wasn't really won over really by the the premise or what was going on um the acting in it you know considering the cast it's got you know led by christopher reeve i i was a little let down by it but overall i thought the movie was was okay it's a solid five out of ten for me but 
it's a really tricky one to sort of uh, put your finger on what what was good and what was bad about this film. It was very, very sort of middle of the road, um, Village of the Damned for me. But I still enjoyed watching it because of how the movie looked. That was the real, real selling point to me. But I'd say it's not one to rush out and go and see. Um, definitely not. But it's just nice to have to try and sort of, you know, get as many of his films as he can because, you know, when you watch Carpenter film, you definitely feel that, you know, his fingerprints over it. Um, so coming up next is uh, Escape from L.A. I think this is uh, the only sequel he's done, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's Carpenter, uh, again, reuniting with um, Kurt Russell, a snake Plissken. Um, this had some good moments in it. I really sort of thought uh, Bruce Campbell in this movie was really quite creepy as that uh, sort of like plastic surgeon. Um, but this is not by any means a good movie. Um, the effects in this are terrible. Um, and I think that's being polite. Um, they are really, really bad for um, for a movie of this calibre. Um, I will say, Kurt Russell's great in it. Um, really, really think he's fantastic in it. Um, had a great supporting cast too. I think Steve Buscemi's in there as well. But it, it's not Carpenter's finest hour by any any means. But I, I, this was the one where it was like I didn't really enjoy it. I didn't, you know, the you picking at picking at scraps to try and find something positive about this and. You know, other than Kate Russell, it really, really is on its bare bones. Um, but yeah, it's 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 not great. I picked it up when I picked up Escape from New York. You know, just to sort of watch the two back to back. But it's it's night and day in terms of quality. It really is. Um, but yeah, I can't really say much more than Escape from LA. That other other than that. Uh, so next up, we've got Vampires. Um, yeah, vampires is, I think one that gets a lot of, sh- lot of shit. I think from from what I've heard, you know, it's not, it's not great. It's not amazing. It's one of the more forgettable ones. Um, I think it's very underrated. If I'm honest, I don't know. I don't think it's, I don't think this is a great movie. I think it's good. I think it's it's competent. It's good. Uh, it's got some really good effects in it. Some really good ideas in it. Uh, I think James Woods is brilliant in it. And I had a gr- This is the one where it was kind of like, right, okay, I can have a good time with a Carpenter film again. Um, you know, after Escape from uh, Escape from LA, it really, really uh, is a step up from that film. But not his finest hour, definitely not. But it's not bad either by any means. It, you can really watch this and get something out of it. You know, it's, it's a very, very underrated vampire film as well. Um, I just think it's it's really good. It's you know you can you can really really get something out of it. So I definitely recommend checking out Vampires. Um, you know I remember watching it when I was a kid. Um, late one night, you know I think it was on like Channel Four or something like that. But and I was I was hooked by it. I really enjoyed it. And watching it on Blu-ray it sort of rekindled that memory for me. And yeah, I, I think it's I think it's a good good film. Not one of his best, but it's still. You can still get something from it and, and enjoy it. So, yeah, that's Vampires. Um, next up, we've got Ghosts of Mars. Um, how can I say this? This movie is absolutely fucking terrible. Um, completely, completely void of anything good, in my opinion. It was... It was just you, you. I expected so much more from this. I really, really did, and it's it's so bad. It's 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 an ugly looking movie. It's not shot very well. Um, I thought well, I, there was a point of this movie where I was. I thought, oh, shit's gonna go down. We're really, really gonna uh, a really good action sequence is gonna come, and then the movie ended, and I, I was I was pretty annoyed to be honest uh, I just I just thought oh, well I'm never going to watch that again 
Um, I think this was the point where Carpenter himself just sort of stopped caring about making films, and uh, you can really, really tell in this movie. I don't recommend Ghosts of Mars. Um, if you want to see it to be a completionist, go for it. Do not expect a lot. Um, I'd go as far as to say I think it's awful. Um, for me, definitely one of his worst. But it is it is what it is. Um, you know, it, I just didn't get anything out of this movie really uh, it's terrible uh, so next up we've got I think this was his last sort of feature length movie uh, and that is The Ward uh, with Amber Heard uh, I'm not going to get into the whole politics about you know Amber Heard and, and Johnny Depp and all that you know that's topic for a different day or whatever but the movie itself um, I thought this was okay Solid 5 out of 10, um, in my opinion, really. I've seen people say it's absolutely dire. There's an, it's void of anything enjoyable. And yes, I understand that. But from my point of view, I thought this movie was just, in a nutshell, fine. Fine. Not good. Not bad. Run of the mill, fine. Um I didn't think it was boring either. You know, that's that's the worst sin a movie can make is be boring. I can't really say I was bored, if I'm honest. Um, I was entertained by it, but yeah, the, it, the quality is not there with it. It's it's just run of the mill bland for me. Um, but yeah, that that's that's the ward really. That that is it. Um, so yeah, those are my John Carpenter movies in that I have in my collection so yeah um, really really good body of work overall I'd say um, yeah just one of the one of the most entertaining and intriguing directors from the 70s 80s and 90s I uh, just um, really love his stuff um, love the boundaries that he pushes you know when making a film just absolutely fall in love with his movies, the good ones anyway, you know, he's he's a great director to sort of binge watch his body of work. Um, you'll have a great time with it. Uh, one or two duds in there, um, I would say, but if you stay clear with them, definitely have a good time. Um, so yeah, that is my John Carpenter collection. Let me know if you've seen any of these films, what your favourite ones are. Um, you know, his movies are definitely the subject of discussion. You could debate and talk about them for a very, very long time. And he's one of the uh, best directors I think we've ever had. Um, and it's been such a pleasure to watch what he's brought to the screen. Um, so, yeah, those are my John Carpenter movies. Um, as I said, if you're new to the channel, please think about hitting the subscribe button. And hitting the like button and all that jazz. Um, you know, if you feel so uh, compelled to do so. And I'll leave the video there and say stay safe, guys. Take care. And I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.